Okay, so we're gonna do a couple of videos today. Um, I'm advancing in my strategies. We're even using the blackboard today. It's very important. So this video is actually a precursor to the second one. That's why this is called number one and that one's called number two. And what we're gonna talk about um, is power. So we have more people getting smart trainers, more people getting on Zwift, all of this kind of stuff. And that understanding what you're looking at when you see that power number is something at first that can be quite confusing. Like you don't, your brain doesn't even have a place to, to set it in order to understand what that number is. And so I just want to conceptually start with what is the power number? What is it telling us? So we're going to start with, with actually talking about the run instead of about the bike, because the run is something that most of us are much more familiar so what with. We're going to talk about with the run um, starts with just the basic concept. So if, if you, if you go out and run, um, and you know that, you know, if I say, I want you to go run a 10 minute mile for most people watching this video, that is going to register in their brain with feeling like a certain effort level. So for some people, a 10 minute mile is going to be, um, a hard sprint for some people, a 10 minute mile is going to be an easy recovery run. No judgment on that, but that's just how they feel. And for most of us, when you say, you know, go run a 10 minute mile, there is a feeling that's associated with that pace, with that number. Um, and so that tells you, knowing how that, that 10 minute mile feels to you, gives you a lot of information about how long you can hold that pace. If 10 minute miles are something that is a sprint effort for you, you're not going to be thinking I can do that for an entire marathon, right? Because you know that 10 minute mile is associated with a perceived effort with how hard something feels. Just like if a 10 minute mile is something that is an easy, um, like zone one, zone two effort for you, that is something that may be more like a marathon pace for you. Right? Again, you've taken the 10 minute mile, you've said, this is how it feels to me. And so I can estimate how long I can go at that pace. Now, when you first got into running, nobody's born knowing what their 10 minute mile is going to feel like you learned that from having done it. Like you've been out running and you see what your numbers are. And after time you develop a frame of reference for what that pace feels like. So I could say, okay, go run a 10 minute mile. And when you're first starting out running, it doesn't mean anything to you. By the time you've run a lot, you know what effort that is. You know how that feels. Now, I know that I am repeating myself here, but I wanna drill that point home. You were not born understanding what that number, 10 minute mile, meant. It didn't have any feeling associated with it. But over time, you've developed that. You know what that feels like, about how long you can hold it, all of that kind of stuff. So we take that concept, and that same concept applies to that power number that you are watching on the bike. That power number, over time, you will become familiar with it and you will understand what that number feels like. So that means if, you know, if you've been watching on Zwift or you've been watching on your Garmin, and we will get into in a separate video here in a second, um, what, what you're looking at to, to track those numbers because there are different ways to do that. But just for right now, conceptually, when you are looking at that number, what you are doing is starting to develop a frame of reference for what that number feels like. So if you know, you know, you're watching and that number is hitting right around 100 watts, you know what that feels like. And at first, it's not going to be clear. Um, and especially with power, because on, when you're running, that pace, the, the way we watch that pace doesn't tend to jump, as, uh, jump around as much. Now we're going to talk more about that. Uh, because there are there are ways to eliminate that jump when you're dealing with power too. But for right now, most of you may be watching a number with power that's jumping a huge amount. So it's going from like 95 to 150 to 87 to 250 back down to 100. So it's all over the place. And so it becomes like, how do you develop that frame of reference when it's jumping all over the place? That is going to be um, something that we talk about in a minute. But for right now, just understand that the reason you're watching those numbers is to develop a frame of reference for what that feels like. So if you see the number 100 displayed on your little power um, deal, 
If that's the metric you're watching, over time you are going to understand if 100 watts is something that you can hold for 30 seconds, is it something that you can hold for three hours, is it something in between? Frame of reference, starting to associate those power numbers with how you feel, just like on the run. And that takes some time, it takes paying attention to what you're doing. There's lots of things that go into it, but just from a conceptual standpoint, what we are trying to understand when we use the power meter is to start to associate a feeling with a number. It takes time. If you have questions about that, go ahead and put it in. I'll get to um, some of the things that come next in some, some videos that are coming up.